live. Hey, Art. Hey, Michelle. How are you? Hey, everyone. Uh, mm -hmm. Joining us live both on Facebook and YouTube for Earth is a Witness. I'm going to stop counting the episodes because episode dates everything. You know, all it matters is the power of now. So today is, a, again, a very lucky day. We have, once again, a distinguished photographer, uh, Michelle Valberg, uh, joining us from Canada uh, today. And she's going to talk about, you know, the uh, Inuit, uh, the people of the Arctic and the inspiring lives of the people of the Arctic. And also joining us is, you know, our uh, uh, re uh, artist in residence, you know, Art Wolf. Art, welcome. Michelle, welcome. How are you guys doing? Fantastic. Excellent. And we are just... positive people. <laughs> yes, that's right. That's right. And again, it's a beautiful day in Seattle. Um, and these are beautiful images. You know, Michelle, I just pulled out a few images uh, just to start off the conversation. Uh, I love these portraits, you know, obviously the portraits of the Inuit, uh, the little boy on the right and those beautiful hands, you know, and I know there are some interesting stories uh, of these people and the hands and the hardships, uh, you know, that they go through living off the land and what we can all learn from them on the power of, you know, strength and resiliency. So with, with that, Michelle, I'd love to turn it over to you to tell us some stories. All right. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm, uh, I'm super happy to be here from Ottawa, Canada. I'm just going to do my screen share. Yeah. Uh, there we go. We're going to have a little, a little, a little session on, oh, where am I here? Oh, 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 go oh. Back. Yeah, okay. go back to go. Sorry about that. That's no not, worries, no worries. We got our little sneak peek. Yes. That I have I have things go wrong technically. Everyone knows that that knows me and my speaking. But anyway, <laughs> um, you, you yeah, I've been, say sometimes uh, the uh, the demo gods are not always with you or the goddesses, but that's yeah, fine. It's yeah, life. No, I'm telling you, I've taken the power out at CES, so you know if I, <laughs> if I put that on stage, then I can do pretty much anything. Anyway, yeah. I thought. Uh, when I uh, was asked to share my photos of the Inuit, I, first of all, thank you for asking me to do that because I spend the majority of my time now speaking about wildlife and landscapes in the various places that I get to, to visit. And um, it was really nice to go back actually and, and look at uh, the regions and the people and the images that I've captured over the last number of years. And I think in 12 years, um, I've been to the Arctic 60 times. Well, 59. It would have been my 60th wow. year. Yeah. So I was actually supposed to be in Norway today going, doing uh, Greenland and Iceland and then the Northwest Passage. So um, a lot of uh, the regions that I've gone to, a lot of people don't even know where they are or haven't heard of them. And, and I just thought I should give a context to um, to the regions that I've, I've visited in the Arctic and, um, and it, it actually, the Arctic regions in Canada take up one third of Canada's landmass, if you can imagine. Mm. So there I am way at the bottom in Ottawa. And uh, I've traveled to every province and every territory. And Art, I know you spent a lot of time in Alaska and likely BC as well. Um, in, with Yukon and Northwest Territories, the region is called Inuvialuit. Um, then we have Nunavut, uh, which is uh, the region in yellow. And then Northern Quebec is, um, is actually called Nunavik. And then Nunatsuvut uh, is Northern Labrador. And I know, Paramal, that you love to um, say that word, right? Can you say it? Yes. Yes, <laughs> I do. I, I do. I dig I it. <laughs> Nunatsuvut. I, I like your sense of humor, you know, that's, that's good. Keep going. <laughs> it's so hard. You know, I, I struggle um, getting some of the words out and I apologize if I'm not saying it properly, but um, yeah, so this is, this gives you a little bit of context. I spent a lot of time in Greenland as well. Um, I've been through the Northwest Passage um, probably six or seven times. And um, yeah, I just, I, I've been 59 times. So it obviously captured and, and um, stole my soul. And, and the first time that I visited, I went to Pond Inlet and um, I went out to the flow edge and I absolutely was taken. And I knew that I wanted to go back and I wanted to continue going back. It captured um, my imagination and my soul and my creativity. And 
Um, I also didn't very know very much about the Arctic regions in Canada as well, which is I found really unfortunate. And uh, you know, when I went up there, I, I hadn't gone to the Arctic before. I didn't really know where I was going. I knew I was going to the north um, eastern side of, of Baffin Island. It was six hours from uh, Ottawa all the way up, and uh, I was going out to camp on the ice. Um, but I, I, you know, in my mind, I thought flat, white, and cold. You know, I just didn't realize um, the diversity, the wildlife, the landscape, and the people. And and I went to photograph polar bears, and and I was so taken with the people um, and the landscapes, the whole experience that I just knew that I had to go back. And when I was walking, um, uh, around the the communities and um you know you're able to see old Thule sites this is a settlement that's being uh or that has been reconstructed uh, up in resolute um there is just so much life that goes on in these communities and i just absolutely love to photograph the people within the community as well and it's one thing to capture those beautiful faces but when you can actually see where they live how they live i mean this is in september so the snow's already on the mountains uh just her mismatched mitts and uh the expression that she gave me um mm. they're just so welcoming and and lovely um people uh, and i think art especially when you were talking about the maasai and your tequila time you know it's so important that um when you're trying to connect with these people in a short period of time that you really have their trust and that they're they're allowing you to take the photos. I think it's really important for us to well go into these communities and, and be very respectful to them because some of them do not want to have their photos taken. So the kids are always so fun, you know, they're always inquisitive and sometimes they'll try and take your cameras from you. And, um, you know, I learned my lesson once, I don't have to do that again. And um, yeah, so you show them the back of the camera and then they want to take photos and, and it's just oodles of fun. Yeah. Um, there's just so much of their of their culture and their traditions that are around their homes. And um, this was up in Holman in Northwest Territories. I was uh, going to the Northwest Passage with Abercrombie and Kent last year. What skull is that? It's a bear skull. So I was I was absolutely intrigued with this skull, and I was photographing. And then all of a sudden, this little boy appeared in the window, and hmm. uh, I was shooting probably a two point eight. You know, and I did do a video, and he was waving, and it was it was so it was so great. Um, but I I just because he's not in focus, and the focus is on the skull. Um, this is just a really cool image that I. I thought um, was quite striking and it was a different. Yeah, I, I love it. I love the fact that the kid is way out of focus, but he's there and you can in the out of focus, you can still see his expression. So it's, it's great the way it sits back there quietly. Yeah. So it adds yeah. a bit of tension to me personally. Like, I don't know quite what's going on. There's a skull here and he's <laughs> looking and, you know, am I safe if I had been there, you know, just once, am I okay? Yeah. Subject to interpretations. Yeah, exactly. And it's so wonderful. And, you know, one of the things that I love to do is, is talk to the, to the, um, the members in the community and, and uh, to hear their stories. And this was also in Holman and it was his first polar bear that he had ever, ever shot. And um, he was so proud and he had skulls and he had so much of his tools lying around and, there was just so much story um, and he was incredibly proud. And that's what I, I loved about the, the expression on his face because he was just so happy uh, to share his story and that we were there to listen. And that's the other thing, right? They're, they're, they're wanting to share their stories. And, and uh, when you sit back and you, and you listen and you put your camera down and it's not always about that photo, but it's about that connection. Um, to the to the subject and ultimately I think that makes us all better portrait photographers obviously when you can connect with your subject and sometimes it means putting the camera down and just having that conversation and hearing what they have to say. So um, I work with a number of different um, uh, companies, I, Abercrombie and Kent and Aber Adventure Canada, Frontiers North, so I work as a as a resource photographer. I also build my own trips and um, and I also have a, a not-for-profit uh, that I travel with. And in this um, instance, I went up in March. And of course, I, Art, I don't know about you, I've never been up in the Arctic in 24 hours of night, of, of no, no sun. 
Um, November 1st, the sun goes down and February 2nd or 4th, it's somewhere around there, the sun, the sun starts to come back. Um, this was the end of March and it, the sun just rotated very, very low. And I have this guide who took me out to the flow edge and it was minus 30. It was just, wow. it, was so, it was so cold. Minus 30 Celsius. I guess it's kind of the same in Fahrenheit at, at some point. All I know is it's very, very cold. No very, cold. very cold. And I was in an Inuit sled. It's called a Cometic. And, and anyway, the flow edge had actually uh, frozen in. So we went out for this length way, like this long time. I was just so cold. Um, I loved every second of it, though. And uh, so I was talking to my guide about about what he wears, and he had on more of a southern traditional um, parka. And I said, "What do you what do you wear when it's minus 50? <laughs> you know, how do you how do you sustain your warmth when you're going out for long periods of time on a hunt?" And he said, "Oh, I have this beautiful wool jacket that um, he had made, and and his sealskin pants." And I said, "Can you put it on for me when we get back to?" It was in Pangerton to the community, and so I can photograph you. Um, he had such an incredible face, and so he came down. We went, and I mean, the sun wasn't in, in the position that I probably would have wanted. I didn't really have much of an opportunity, but he took me down there, and and he just started posing, and I didn't realize that he actually did a lot of uh, movies and had done a lot of acting and and posing and modeling and that sort of stuff. So he starts posing away and looking at the sun. <laughs> exactly what to do and I was capturing all these shots but it was just like oh there was just something missing you know and uh so I got in a little closer I was going back I was changing my horizon where I was placing him and you know he kept posing and I didn't want to stop him either because it was just magic with what he was doing and he was so proud that he knew how to pose and everything and but he I think he could sense for me that I wasn't really quite getting what I had wanted and then he looked at me, he put up his hood and he, and he looked, so I took a picture and then he went like this and he went down to the ground and then he threw up snow into his face. <laughs> uh. <laughs> so it became, it became a whole different shot, right? Uh, because, yeah. Now he's got the snow covering his fur, uh, some wetness onto his face and it just looked like he was really out on the, on the hunt and spending time on the land. Um, you know, and I, you were talking with Matthew Jordan Smith about that, and uh, when he was talking about the music um, and yes. not that, that right tune, and and sometimes you just need a little bit of inspiration and help from from either your subject or somebody else that they can just switch it up for you. And I think it's really important for us to listen and be open to those those suggestions for sure. Because it could. I think I, you know what you just said. You know whether you know you you reference Matthew Jordan Smith. You know uh, from last time and you know celeb photography or the Inuit here. I, I think what he just hinted at is no matter who we are, fundamentally we all want the same thing in in some ways. You know we all want to connect first. You know, yeah. and and give the other person what they want in the end. Yeah, and oftentimes when I'm out on the land with my guides, I'm I'm asking them to to pose for me. And this was in a glue lick in Nunavut, and there was this massive Inukshuk. And so I asked uh, Simon to put on his caribou um, uh, uh, hunting gear, and we went up. But I was really, again, struggling, going, how am I going to photograph Simon with this massive Inukshuk? So I was doing some close-up, and I was like, there's something that's got to be happening um, that I can do with this. And so I walked up. I was, I was using like a 70 to 200, so I was... I was back a little bit just in order to get everything in the frame and um, I walked up to him and I, you know, I was just trying to position him and I was really trying to work it. And then I, uh, I said, okay, I'll try that. And I walked away and I walked back to my camera and uh, I turned around and he was hanging, <laughs> he was just hanging out in the nookshuk. <laughs> just like That's a, I love this shot. I love the angle of him versus yeah. the very parallel uh, arms and body of the, and I'm going to bastardize it, but I've photographed a lot of these in uh, Arctic Canada. That is the biggest one I've ever seen. Yeah, it, it, it's huge. And, but and that angle, the angle of him really yeah. works. And it, when he was standing straight and he was in the middle, I think that was the problem. Like it was just, everything was just so linear and straight. Yeah. I, just nothing was working. 
And it was just so much fun that he participated and he was so happy when he saw me smiling. It was just like, and it was just, it was so much fun. And then he did a couple other poses and, and it, it, it absolutely made, made the shot for sure. Yeah. Can I ask a naive question? Um, I have not been there. What is that structure? What does it signify or stand for? It's an anukshuk. So typically they're not this big and uh, they're used for a variety of reasons. And one of, of which is directional, uh, maybe if they're out on land. If, if you're in the, in the Western Arctic, it's very flat. Um, if they're hunting, sometimes there's cash for food at them, but it gives directions for, mm -hmm. for where, where they're going or where the hunting Got ground is. So there's a number of different reasons that they're mm. in this place, but they're never this, as, as, as Art said, they're never this large typically. And I don't think this stands anymore either. There was kind of a sad story that goes with it, but um, mm. I'm not entirely sure. This is a number of years ago, but yeah, it was, it was a pretty, uh, it was a pretty neat. Uh, encounter for sure um we were out on the flow edge and uh you know we were we were photographing the narwhal and and uh a hunter came up and and he had just uh had a seal kill and he wanted to offer um a, a, a food to our guides and and also offer um our participants in our group an opportunity to taste seal i don't eat red meat so uh, this is when I really love having my camera in hand because I look busy and I keep it up and I'm photographing all the time because, um, you know, there's such a sharing giving uh, community and not me not eating meat. It's just easier to just be, be busy than explaining that I don't, that I don't eat meat. <laughs> and um, so the guys are eating and, and they're, they're, it was when they were chopping up the brain, I think that I was just like, okay, I have to walk away. So then he came over to where I was standing to see if I was okay. And then I said, hey, can I, can I take your photo? And he had glasses on and his hood was down. And so um, I said, can you pick up your, your, your spear and, and can you put your gun around the back? And then all of a sudden I turned into this portrait photographer. And uh, the guys that I'm with are, are wildlife photographers. So they're just standing behind me watching me you know, take control of the situation. And I placed him, I had him face the sun and then I took off his glasses. I asked him, but I said, can you take off your glasses? Cause they were so glared. And then uh, I said, can you put up your hood? <laughs> so he put up his hood and then um, yeah, just magic happened. You know, it's just because it's, you know where we were, we were on the edge of the ice. We were up in the high Arctic and um, you know just the whole story around it. And, you know, it was just as natural as can be, but a little bit controlled, you know, and the guys loved it, right? Because they were just watching this all of a sudden happen. And they couldn't believe that I actually asked him to take his, his glasses off. But it really made a difference in, in the image for sure. Hmm. Cool image, yeah. So this is Alyssa P and, and I went into her home to photograph her and she is and was, she's not with us anymore, but um, hmm. she was in her eighties and she was, sitting on this couch in her home and I was I went in to, to photograph her for my book and um, um, she just kept smiling I mean she didn't speak uh, English and I'm sure um, Art, you've been in many situations where you didn't speak their language but it's it's that communication that you have with the eyes and and the smile and you know that that um, intimacy that you have to have with that person in such a short period of time in order to create these you know, these portraits and she just kept smiling at me. And oftentimes they think that I'm just going to take a picture in and leave. And, and again, you know, I was like struggling a little bit. I didn't want to move her. And she was, I love the whole textures and patterns of the couch and the, you know, that in itself tells the story, but she was a famous artist and hmm. um, she started the, the art studio. She co-founded the art studio in Pangerton and she was well known for her drawings and her painting and um i was just taken with her hands i mean that's where that's where i just went i you know look at the smile look at her face i mean i loved i loved all of it but i just couldn't help but look at her hands and that's where um i went in a little bit closer and then she put her hands on her lap and then it was just okay this is this mm -hmm. is the shot and it was tough because you know you're looking at i for my book it was like oh i'm loving the the expression and her smile and her beauty um, and so much life lived and, and, but it's, it's, that's where it, it made sense for me. That's the image that I chose to put in the book. 
What's interesting to me is her dress is so full of color. And I've been in a lot of communities, including uh, the far Canadian North, where it's fairly monochromatic, but the houses are very colorful. And you see that in East Greenland and in other locations in the Arctic. But look at how they're drawn towards such colorful dress. And, mm -hmm. you know, humans need color in their lives and they respond to it. And look at her in that previous full image. You just see her so proudly wearing that dress. Yeah. So full of color. Yeah. And I noticed that I was in Africa in, in February. And of course, you know, you're seeing all this color dynamic, like the yellows and the reds. And I mean, there's just color everywhere. And came back to Canada. And of course, it's midwinter and everyone's in black. Yeah. And everyone's walking around so different. It, it was really fascinating, you know, going and seeing the change from one community to the other and, and one culture to the other. And, you know, the vibrancy to, to black. <laughs> As you said, Art, we need color in our lives for sure. Yeah, I, I, you said it really good, Art. That was Art. That was good. We all need humans need color in our life. I, that's a good hashtag. That's a good. That's a good. You're such a marketer, Parable. <laughs> He's probably said that before, Parable. <laughs> no, I don't think he did. I think it's no. That's a, that's a newism. Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> you know, Art Michelle Art thrives in good company there you go so credit to you and wow. i and the awesome. audience wow awesome well you know it's funny we're talking about color uh and i you know uh, also um i just got a text before coming on and somebody asked me about uh the black and white filter i'm using the new mirrorless from nikon and um what I absolutely love about it is you can see in black and white, there's these uh, filters. Um, and I, I absolutely take them with the carbon filter because of the intensity and the contrast. And uh, when you're able to actually see through your viewfinder in black and white, it's a whole different concept. And I think it changes the way that you maybe compose or you're not trying to imagine what you're seeing uh, in black, in color, in black and white, you're actually seeing it. And uh, it's really made a huge difference for the way that I create in black and white now. Um, and again, there's just so much character, lines and, and um, you know, the life lived. Uh, the woman on the, on the bottom right, I uh, had set up a, a photo shoot with her at the health center. And when I went in, um, I was getting set up and, and she walked in and, and again, you're not speaking the same language. And, she saw me and, and she came in, she took off her jacket and then she took off her sweater and then she started to take off her shirt because she thought I was a doctor. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 no. Anyway, it was just one fun. Um, well, I, I think these portraits are wonderful and the choice of uh, taking them in black and white is a really good choice. The texture, the, the uh, behavior. I love the guy up in the upper left just the shape of his eyes and the way his face is so sculptured. He's yeah. almost like porcelain. And yeah. the lady in the middle, every line in her face tells the story of her life. So you, you've done a great job with these portraits. Really okay. nice. Well, and the woman in, it, it's also quite striking in color too, because her kerchief or her head um, scarf is all those colors that Elizabeth's dress was. Um, so it's kind of equally beautiful in color, interestingly enough. But I think it just accentuates, the black and white accentuates her, her face and her detail. And, and I think you pay more attention to her eyes and, and, and the soul of her versus, you know, maybe being caught up a little bit more in the color. And the top left, Abraham, he's actually in The Fast Runner. I don't know if you've ever seen that movie, but. Is it fast runner or long distance runner? <laughs> I've seen it three times. It's by the Canadian Film Board, right? Oh, yeah. So Abraham. I've seen it three times. Have you really? Yes. Oh, there I you love go. it when he buries himself in the kelp and the seaweed at the edge of the ocean. Wow. I'm taking a note of this. I got to watch it tonight. 
Fast runner, you're right. It's not long distance runner, it's fast runner. So I have actually seen that three times. Oh, well, there you go. So now you, you can you can see, uh, you, maybe you'll remember his face. Um, this next shot I put in just to, just to get the situation. Like when I'm working with uh, these, um, on these uh, cruises, you know, I'm, I'm first on uh, the, the land and um, oftentimes I, I try to take as much uh, images that I can before all the passengers come out. And a lot of times this is what happens, right? You're in a gymnasium, you're, you're watching these performances and they're all in their beautiful um, cultural outfits. And, but you have all these people in the background and colors and everything else. So I always try to, I love the challenge of how am I gonna photograph uh, in this situation and really create something. And this is when I went to black and white in the, my picture control with my Z6. Um, and I got down low on the ground and, and he's the drummer. And I mean, again, he's just such, such character. He's also an actor and uh, he's a drummer and he's so powerful when he performs. But I was battling the low light. I was battling, you know, the people in the background and and then being able to switch to black and white and, and, to, and to shoot in that style. I'm always looking for those challenges because I never want an experience like this to go by without trying to take the opportunity to, to create something magical. So I just try to take uh, different kinds of images that I would probably, um, that I wouldn't take if I was in a controlled situation. Same, you know, um, he was demonstrating uh, his kayak and, um, and, you know, the people in the background and I just get down below in between the legs and you know, I just try to find the angles and wait for that right moment to try to create around around all the people that that are are part of, of the performance because they're you know they're the guests they're the they're the important ones so I try to work around it um, at all times. This was with the Veggie Canada. This is on Devon Island, and um, and I knew that IU and Matthew uh, were going to go out to the Thule site, and uh, so I followed them. We, they were working with me and. And uh, so we ran up to the Thule site and I said, okay, Matthew, um, uh, 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 okay, stand here. And you, okay, you gotta look into the sun and, and it was really, really windy and he had long hair. So fortunately the sun direction and the wind direction were right. I sat down and she started singing and, um, and then Matthew started drumming and, uh, and but he, he was holding it up. I'm like, okay, just hold it there, hold it there. But the wind was taking it, it was so light, right? And it's just, it's moving it around. And, Stay, stay, this as still as you can because I had a hundred passengers walking up behind that hill. So, you know, for me in this image, I would want to get low anyway because I wanted to separate him from the land and, and put his, you know, the, the primary, the, the drum into the sky. So it, it worked for me. But man, talk about this was like an instant. Um, I had maybe time for 10 shots. And then next thing you know, the passengers were were coming up in their multicolored jackets and standing watching the performance because that's what they were yeah. there to do. Um, but you never know where some of these images are going to uh, to end up. And and for me, one of the highlights of, of my career as a photographer, I've been shooting for over 30 years. And um, and this was uh, uh, for the 150th anniversary of Canada. I got nice. an image on a Canadian mint coin. Ah, nice. Oh. Yeah, it's a ten dollar. Wow. It's a ten dollar. Really work. So that would be what fifteen dollars U.S. <laughs> you could grab. You could have a Starbucks with it, no problem. <laughs> or, that's Starbucks for all three of us. <laughs> no, well, not no. yet. No, <laughs> no, that's true. Never mind. <laughs> that that rounded uh, form worked so well with your composition. It's so effective. Yeah, it was like, I was lucky, you know, because they asked me to, they wanted me to represent Nunavut, um, but they didn't tell me what it was for. So he had to kind of, the designer had to kind of direct me to, okay, imagine center, or imagine three parts. And, you know, so he was trying to roundabout way, tell me what he was looking for. And sadly, I didn't get in the coin, but um, Anyway, it was it was a definite definite highlight for sure. Do you have these coins with you, Michelle? Like, where can one find these coins if someone you know? Where does one see it in real? Uh, on the Royal uh, the Mint Mint .ca, um, you can look and see if they're still available. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they are. Um, I have just a few left. So, um, yeah, 
I'm not sure if they have any left, but mint.ca, you can look. Okay. Yeah, and, and again, same, I was in this uh, beautiful performance in Cambridge Bay and all the, all, the, uh, all the passengers were there. The lighting was horrible and I saw Colleen and I was like, I have to photograph this beautiful girl. So once everybody started to leave, I walked up to her and I said, can I take you to the window? <laughs> and can I take your photo? And, and she followed me along and, and uh, this was just with window available light. And again, with, you know, just a few minutes of time and, and I just grabbed the shot and I had her looking at me, but because her face was raised a little bit, I just love that glare, you know, that, that glance off. Um, but again, it's just taking those opportunities and trying to make it your own. Um, even if you have restrictions or, you know, the lighting isn't working for you, it's just, you know, make, make it work for you. And uh, well, kind of what strikes me with this image, can you go back, is how that um, darker red, I guess it probably is fox fur, um, spirals out from her face. It's like radiant. It just is, there's a lot of movement in this portrait, just yeah. exploding outward into the composition. It's very, very nice. Her eyes and, and the eyes of the previous people, they're so distinctive in their shape. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I've photographed uh, people in central Mongolia and I would be hard pressed to tell the difference. And of course, yeah. all the First Nations of North America eventually came out of, originally came out of Central Asia. So the connection mm -hmm. is pretty obvious when you see these beautiful portraits. Yeah. It is um, a beautiful this, image. Yeah. I know Paramal, that's one of your favorite. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, you know, I was telling Art, I was telling uh, Michelle as we were talking earlier, she also has a bit of a, you know, the way she's looking as a vision or a shamanic quality to it. You know, at least the way I see it, it's looking at something and seeing something that otherwise a normal person like me wouldn't see. Yeah. Uh, this is Martha Flaherty. Um, I'm sure you've seen Martha from the North art. Have you seen that movie? Martha, no. no, no, but I will look it up. Oh, Martha the from the North. Of the North, yeah. She was, of the uh, North. Her, her story of relocation to Breeze Fjord, her family relocation uh, to residential school, it, it, it's just a must-see if you, uh, you want to have... Uh, was she relocated from Greece Fjord or oh, to? To Greece Fjord from northern Quebec, yeah, her family. And uh, anyway, I'm not going to get into the whole story, but right. she, um, yeah, it's worth, uh, worth watching for sure. Martha okay. Did, you know, I got to work with her. And again, just, you know, can I take your photo and just trying to create this was uh, in Crocker Bay on um, yeah, in Nunavut and and um, yeah with her beautiful MOT and and uh, I just wanted to capture that beautiful soul and and you know again it was the same thing if this is um, uh, from Joe Haven first off a uh, grandfather and a grandson it came down uh. to it was seven o'clock in the morning so um, this side of the Arctic is quite flat um, and you know, they, it was like they were one in the ground. He, the grandfather couldn't speak a word of English. So I was just smiling at him and they, he smiled back and the grandson just looked off to see what was happening. And I don't know, it's just one of those images. It's just like, they were so part of the land and, um, yeah. And, and, and just the story of their culture and, and yeah, it's just one of those images that really struck me. And, and again, you never know where it's going to end up. And, you know, there it is, um, a vertical out of the horizontal, but it did, it did get the Canadian Geographic cover, which is pretty cool. Wow, great. Um, yeah, and then, okay, so have you been to Little Diomedes Art? No, I have not been there. No, so I was able to go, we, we landed there with Abercrombie um, uh, last September, and uh, Little Diomedes, I think it's like 25 kilometers or so from the mainland of Alaska. And uh, what is super cool um, is that there's little diamede and big diamede, and there's a, maybe a 90, I think they were saying there were 90 people population, this tiny little village on the side of this mountain. And um, uh, you look across and you see big diamede, which is only 2.5 miles, I think. And that's Russia. So, right. and international dateline is right in between. So you're actually looking at Russia the next day. 
Um, and yeah, there's no roads. Um, most of the you know communities in in the north don't have connecting roads, um, but this had no roads. Like there was just this walkway that um, uh, that they had. They have a, a, a post office. They even had the wanted signs in the post office, and um, they gave us a beautiful community performance. and And it was just it was just so much fun to to be there and to to experience this tiny community. And, uh, and the only way to really get there is on cruise cruise ships. Yeah, they do have yeah. a helicopter system, or you know that that is for emergency and stuff. But yeah, and even still, our, as you probably know, it's very very dangerous to even to most times the current. Um, it's tough to, to actually be able to land there. So that was pretty exciting to be able to visit. This was at the end of the Northwood Passage um, trip that we did starting in Greenland. So it was really cool. How many days was that? It was 21 and we ended in 21. Nome the next day. Yeah, yep. that was pretty cool. So just to end, I know that I'm, I'm going over. Um, I, when I first went up to um, the Arctic in Pond Inlet, I noticed are you guys hockey fans? <laughs> Are you hockey fans, you two? Oh, um, not too much. Not too much. Okay. Well, you know Canadians are hockey fans. Like oh, I do. Canadians are huge so hockey fans. Hockey. Yes. And my brother lives in Toronto. So I'm going to say our family okay. is a hockey fan too, by definition. Okay. All right. Now, so and Seattle's getting their professional hockey team this year. Oh, well, what a year. Right? We're yeah. coming after you. Yeah. We're coming after you, Michelle. We're coming. <laughs> well, Canadians in the Arctic are, are awfully, uh, yeah, they love the Toronto Maple Leafs and Montreal Canadiens. I'm really trying to get them to like the Ottawa Senators a little bit more. I bring up Senators. And <laughs> so I noticed uh, the, the huge love of, of hockey. And, uh, and when I went into the, into the store, I noticed, um, you know, in particular, a two liter carton of milk was selling for $18. And uh, I was watching the kids playing on the streets with, with ratty old equipment and some barely and wearing anything. And, and I, um, I went, I, ca I came back and I went, well, I've been given such a gift uh, of, of these people and of this land and what can I do? And I asked Adventure Canada if I could bring up hockey equipment on my next trip with them. And they said, yes. And, um, you know, it's a power of an idea and, uh, uh, that was 12 years ago. I have a small committee. Um, we have amazing ambassadors that help us like Scotia Bank and Canadian North. And uh, we've been able to bring up the Stanley Cup to um, at least 10 Nunavut communities and Northwest Territories as well. And uh, hockey greats like Lenny McDonald and Mark Napier. And um, for those uh, wonderful, they're just legends in the hockey world. And these kids got to play on the ice, play hockey with them and touch the Stanley Cup and but more so we've been able to bring up over a million dollars in hockey equipment. Wow. Wow. Congratulations. Thank you. So it just goes a little bit beyond photography, you know, and just being able yeah. to offer and, and uh, it really has um, it really has made a, a, an impact. And sadly we're not going to be there this year. Um, but yeah, we'll look forward to uh, to returning in twenty twenty one. Let's hope anyway. So that's my that's, little, my that's little... impressive. Oh, thanks, thanks. Well, well you, you know, it doesn't happen alone, and and you know, it's 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 having an idea, and having you know people to stand with you and and help, because imagine the cost of shipping, um, you know, the cost of equipment alone, and and Scotia Bank and Canadian North have have just stepped up hugely. A number of number of different companies have and uh have really have really come together and and yeah it's been great and it's a great way to go back you know and we create these trips and we go to the communities and i've taught a couple of workshops as well to the kids and nikon gave me some little cool pic cameras that i could bring up and you know they think of where they live right an opportunity and and just being able to escape into this little world of photography and, and create in their own communities it was it was great fun Wow. Fantastic. Great stories, great photos. <laughs> yeah, and I gotta and, say, and, you know, it, for me, uh, Michelle, it brings back great memories. I've traveled quite a bit in the Canadian Arctic. And so to see the communities and to see these photos are great memories for me. Oh, that's great. 
You know, and I got to say, just to add to that, um, is also uh, how generous you are, M Michelle, when you talk about the Project North and the giving back. And you didn't stop at photography. You went ahead and said, what what can you give back for the gift you have received? And and a million dollars is is a, is substantial. It's impressive. And uh, in fact, Art, uh, uh, she and I were talking, and for everyone tuning in, you know, um, Michelle has offered, without even asking, you know, a free print uh, of you know, one of her images that she can choose. Um, and she said, you know, if you want, I can do this for your audience. And that is just, that just shows such tremendous generosity, you know, something that is uh, a business for you, that's your livelihood for you to even offer that. Uh, so we just brainstormed and said, you know, uh, everyone who's uh, tuning in right now, Check out her collection uh, that we have curated on Earth is a Witness on Instagram. And what I'm going to say is, you know, say something nice about what you felt watching this presentation and the stories and, and let Michelle pick the winner uh, for, you know, for, uh, for who she's going to send the, the print, you know, to. And she said she can ship it anywhere on the planet. So, um, so that's just very nice. I just, I'm going to say, go back, you know, go to, go check out her work on, Instagram, um, and 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 uh, what you what you felt through these images, what you learned in in your comments, and uh, and Michelle can you know pick you know what resonates with her. Does that sound good, Michelle? Yeah, that's great. You have to say yeah. something nice. That's that's a good thing. Something nice. <laughs> that's a given. Something nice. If it's mean things, say that about me. But <laughs> nice is Michelle. <laughs> Michelle, as we wrap up, I got just two uh, follow up questions for you. Um, uh, what, yes, so a qu question is, um, yes, thank you. Um, let me go into the, uh, yeah, there you go. There you go. Great. Thank you. Okay, I uh, love that. You've been to, you yes, the glasses look great. Yes. Uh, you've been to Arctic, you said almost 50 times. That's, that's incredible. Uh, yeah. What have you learned uh, looking at the lives of the Inuits that you feel is, just mesmerizing. If there's one thing that you have learned looking at how they live, what would that be? Uh, their resilience and their strength. Um, you know, they've been they've been here a long, long time for thousands of years, and um, being able to live as nomadic people, following the migrations of the animals, and being able to um, live off of the land, it's it's extraordinary. I mean, way you know, we complain when it's a little cold. I mean, you guys complain when it's, you know, probably, it doesn't get very cold. And we, yeah, you were snowshoeing in, in Seattle, by the way. <laughs> That's <laughs> our being goofy. That was a joke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think, uh, Michelle, the coldest place I've ever been was Resolute. It was 53 <laughs> below zero in the wind. It was a wind chill. But <laughs> my God, just a few seconds of exposed skin at 53 below zero is a, uh, scars for life. It just wow. ruins. Skin. So that was my coldest place ever. Yeah, but cold but place. what I think, uh, Paramal, if I can answer mm -hmm. along please. with Michelle, is yes, I've been to desert communities. I've been to communities at great elevation in the Himalayas and up in the Canadian Arctic. People live within their means they've learned to adapt to these very tough environments and there's mm -hmm. a lot of wisdom to see communities that live within their means which mm -hmm. i think western culture could learn a lot from and it's not to say they don't have modern communications and they they're humans they're modern humans and they like their creature comforts but they in general, are living within their means. And I think it's something that uh, the United States and all really Western countries could learn a lot from. Yeah. That is so and, well said, Art. Yeah. Go ahead, and, Michelle. And learning about their culture and their traditions and, and realizing how little I knew about the Inuit. And I, I'm Canadian, you know, and I, I was embarrassed. And I knew that if I didn't know very much about it, then probably a lot of my network and a lot of people just didn't really, um, uh, I guess we weren't taught or I, I don't know, we just, 
I, it's embarrassing, actually. It was embarrassing at the time. And it just became my mission. I got to bring this to the South. It's, it's part of what we do. I mean, we're visual storytellers. We have, we're the messengers. And, and yeah. if I could do it in a respectful, beautiful way and, and show what it is that we have to lose uh, if we don't take it, better care of our planet as well. And I, you know, it relates as much as what we take photos where when I take photos of people, it's, it's a lot the same with when our, um, your tequila time, when you were talking about the bears and your, your connectivity with, you know, that one, that one female that knows you've been going back and you know her, she knows you. Uh, and it's that trust. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot of what we have to do in, in portraits as well. And to establish that relationship, that connectivity and in order to capture that that ultimate portrait you know that that can showcase them as as these beautiful people so i think michelle your work is really strong um my favorite of your work are really the black and whites and um that drummer in that performance that side or that uh, rim light was extraordinary so what i would encourage you to do is to go back and back again and let's be really clear. I think the communities in the Arctic regions of the earth are going to be undergoing such radical changes in our lifetimes. And you're on the front line to document a lot of that. And I think it would make a very compelling story and book. So, I mean, that's my two cents uh, is that of all the communities on the planet, I think the first to show and it's already happening climate change affecting the way they hunt the way they live and uh how they adapt is a real interesting story for the rest of the world to know mm -hmm. that is so true well on that note michelle that's food for thought and i will be the first person to buy your book when you have <laughs> that book that that you know that could be your next book uh well with that michelle any 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 final thoughts you know, before and, and our to you too, as we close. Yeah, I have a final, I just want to follow up with that statement. I yeah. know you're into all sorts of great wildlife and I love your wildlife work, but this work on the Inuit will set you separately and you have so much already documented that you are in a good position and it doesn't mean you have to make it your life's work the rest of your life, but if you periodically went back there and just thought about how their lives are changing and um, tell that story. I think it would make an interesting story for all of us. Mm -hmm. all so right. that's, I'll shut up now. No, I really, really appreciate it, obviously. And um, I'm just really thankful to, to you know, be able to share uh, my portrait work with you and, and our, you know, I've, I've followed your work for, for years and years and years and, and a huge fan and, um, yeah, this is super special for me. So thank you. Thank you. Well, now I'm a new fan of yours. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that, thank you. Thank you to, to you both wonderful people. And thanks to, again, uh, for everyone, you know, tuning in both on uh, Facebook uh, and uh, YouTube. And uh, don't forget to check out Instagram and um Try your best for that beautiful print that's coming its way to someone lucky. So with that, thanks again. We'll see you next week. Thank you, Paramal. Thanks, Thank Michelle. You. Thank you.